I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Ben Duffy of MMA Unleashed, Sure Dog. Um, he's so kind enough to join us today to talk about the action pack car that is UFC Vegas 28, Rosenstrike versus Sakai. And I'm getting really tired of UFC Vegas 29, 30, 31, 32. Let's go to some new places, bro. Or let's name them different. One of the two. I'm, hey, I, I'm all for it. You know, it's confusing because I work for an outlet, Sure Dog, that numbers them according to the old way. So this is UFC Fight Night 189. Then it's UFC <laughs> Vegas 20. It's it making my brain come out of my nose holes, man. It's it's too much. Let's just go boxing's way and name it after the fighters because you know that's why we're watching anyway. But UFC's branding is not going to let us do that. Nope. Nope. UFC first. Yep. The brand is bigger than the fighters. According yep. to that. Yeah. Well, that's no. We're, we, that's that. We can go into that all day. We're gonna we're gonna preview a fight. Um, there's not many on this card. Mainly, we are going to talk about the main event: Jarzinho Rosenstrike and Augusto Sakai. Uh, heavyweight bout. Rosenstrike is coming off of uh, what is it? A loss, a win, and a loss to Cyril Gan Junior dos Santos. He beat, and then that awesome loss to Francis Ngannou. Sakai has been a sleeper kind of in the division. Um, he did lose to Overeem in a pretty bad fight, but since then, uh, but before then, he was one, two, three, four, and zero oh in the UFC with wins over Sherman, uh, Arlovsky, Tibera, and Blagoy Ivanov. So Ben. Uh, first thoughts on this fight. Um, it's interesting, but it really doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme. What are your thoughts on it? Well, anytime you have a headliner, especially in the UFC, between two fighters coming off a loss, it can have all kinds of different flavor. Sometimes, you know, you've got someone who's really got their back against the wall. That is not the case here. And I agree with you to a certain extent that, yeah, it doesn't matter. But then again, you're in the UFC heavyweight division where literally anybody is four is four wins away from a title shot. You know, they, well, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Like this isn't welterweight where you can win seven in a row and not even get into the top 10. If you're, if you enter the UFC, you win your first four fights, you're probably on the doorstep of a title shot. So one loss for each of these guys is uh, it's a speed bump. Like one of these guys has hit a speed bump and is going to keep going. And the other guy that has two losses in a row after this has hit more of a wall. You know, so it, it means something to them anyway. Yeah, and, and they want to go out and win every fight. They put a lot in this, but I guess that was a little bit disrespectful on my part. But in terms of the rankings and stuff, this is kind of a um, – I would put this on the prelims of a fight night card the, to lead into the main card. This really, to, to me, that's not a – this isn't a main event contender. Um, I know – I do understand that the UFC has had problems with uh, – with you know booking people because of the fact that it's covid still you know but at the same time come on they can do better than this they can and the thing is there are three heavyweight fights on this card I know. and i this is by far the most relevant of the three i mean may, maybe when I'm, I'm like no it matters maybe it's just that i think it matters compared to like elir latifi versus tanner buzzer hey but tanner's fun man come on T- tanner is a blast but what is Latifi still doing at heavyweight? Uh, leaning on people and riding majestic horses. Oh, ma- dude. That's I, my favorite picture of all time in mixed martial arts. The picture. It's, un- it's unbelievable. It's like if they made those Old Spice commercials in, in Sweden in, instead of the U.S. But <laughs> after seeing Chris Barnett against Ben Rothwell last week, now oh. I want to see Latifi versus Barnett oh. in, at like UFC 267. You must be this tall to ride. <laughs> Just a couple five nine heavyweights slugging it out. Let's let them go at it. Yes, indeed. That was a that was a rough fight. Barnett looked good because I mean, uh, 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 what's his name? Rothwell looked good because Barnett didn't look good. It, made, it really made Rothwell shine. Yes. So, give me your take on the actual fight itself. We know the implications. We're, we're not too big on them and stuff, but stylistically, this is actually a decent fight. Rosenstrike got popped. Sakai can hit too. Um, you know, he's he's been creeping his way up in the heavyweight division. What's what's your what's your thought on this fight? Uh the the good thing about this fight is it is probably going to be a banger. When you get two heavyweights in there all the all the way up to like say the top 5, there's every chance you're going to get a miserable fight with just two dudes sucking wind <laughs> and just a death march, especially because this is scheduled for 5 rounds. But this one should be fun. They are both strikers by preference. 
Uh, I think we saw Sakai's ceiling in his last fight because uh, Alistair Overeem's uh, offensive wrestling and top game have always been criminally underrated parts of his skill set, but he smothered Sakai. Luckily, yeah. that is not a that's not a route to victory that Jairzinho Rosenstrike is going to try and replicate. Rosen, we, we've seen what Rosenstrike wants to do. You know, he wants to, wants to knock your head off. Uh, the question hanging over him is, in the Surreal Gone fight, he did not pull the trigger. It was one of the more shocking changes in fight approach that I've seen midstream from a fighter. Like, if you look at the Rosenstrike that went out and got shellacked by Nganu, and the Rosenstrike that had led up to there, you know, winning his first several UFC fights, versus the gun-shy fighter who was out there against Gone, it was... It was stunning, and it's a little concerning because Sakai is going to be another kickboxer. I mean, he's might not be a surreal gone level kickboxer, but he's going to be another kickboxer who, again, is tall, rangy. I mean, he like you know he looks like he got a little spare tire and stuff, but he is a long limbed guy. He's had like an obvious reach advantage on most of his opponents. If Rosenstrike goes out and puts out another performance like he did against Gone, that's really the only way this fight sucks. I'm going to uh, rewind you a little bit there. The Overeem fight also was kind of trigger shy. Um, it seems like Rosenstrike struggles with people who uh, know distance well. He, he really mm-hmm. capitalizes on, on MMA fighters with, with poor plotting footwork, whereas when you have an MMA fighter with decent footwork like Overeem, who's a K1 champion, or Cyril Ghosn, um, the over the, the Nganu fight, we're not going to count. That was just a, uh, a flash in the pan. But those two guys, I, I really think that if you can be technically sound on the feet, you can have success against Rosenstrike by uh, basically paralyzing him. And I, I think that Augusto Sakai, he's he's not on the Cyril Gan or, or Overeem level of footwork, but he's better than most in the heavyweight division. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. And yeah, I should have included uh, Overeem's fight with Rosenstrike as well, because Overeem was seconds away from winning a kind of pedestrian decision until Rosenstrike, you know, split his face open. Wide uh, open. It was the craziest thing. Oh, it looked like he'd been mauled by a dog. The Joker. Like, you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> just a picture of Rosenstrike. <laughs> no, but it, you bring up a really good point. Rosenstrike is a guy, I mean, you see the Dutch last name that he's from Suriname, which is, you know, where a lot of the great Dutch kickboxers have come from. He presents as a kickboxer, but when he's matched with other seasoned kickboxers, you're right in that his own uh, footwork and management of distance have been shown to be somewhat pedestrian. Like he has gotten as far as he's gotten in the UFC on athleticism, aggression, and just sick power. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like Rosenstrike is awkward when he's standing there waiting to be announced? Have you ever, have you ever paid attention to it? He stands there like with his shoulders hunched forward and he's just kind of standing there weird. Go back and watch. It's the creepiest thing. He looks like a, uh, uh, a NPC who's glitching. It's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. He does. It is like well, now, now I'm going to go look for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Go pull it up right now while we're talking. Go pull it up. It's, it's the most funny thing ever. But, yeah, this fight, I mean, it's going to be a fun fight. Um, the card itself, I was talking trash about it a lot. I am um, kind of rewinding on that because I was looking at some of the fights, and they've got some sleepers on here. Um, Santiago Ponza Bibio is back. Um, I'm, a form, I'm a fan of every Georgian fighter. Shout out to Georgie. Uh, Roman Delazde is fighting. Laureano Staropoli, that's another good fight. Tanner Bowser and Alir Latifi can be good. Yusef Zalal is back. I, I'm really big on him. He's fighting Sean Woodson, who is uh, – both of these guys look like they might be out their way on the UFC with a uh, – well, not Woodson. You know, he's got one loss. Anyways. He's got, he's got one one loss, but, I mean, Woodson has looked really good. Yeah. Like, like, I'm just kind of waiting for him to realize that he's lightweight. <laughs> yeah, stop trying to, to be a, a six-foot-two featherweight. I, I think yeah. it could probably be better for him, but – Mason Jones is back. That's a good one. Um, Ariana Lipsky and Montana De La Rosa is a decent fight. Uh, 125, eh, you know, and then you also got Maquan Americani. So aside from the main event, which I know you're like super hyped for, what other fights are you looking forward to on this card? Uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio versus uh, Miguel Baeza is, I think. Is, that, the- is it Baeza? I thought it was he. he uh, oh, did, did that one? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking the Lazdi fighting Star Poli. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Uh, yeah, Santiago Ponzinibbio versus Miguel Baeza is uh, a fantastic one. Ponzinibbio has been, I mean, I just said off the top that in the UFC welterweight division, you can win seven fights in a row without even scra- scratching the top 10. Ponzinibbio was one of those guys in that in that group where it was like him, uh, Vicente Luque, uh, for a long time, Leon Edwards, that were just winning and winning and winning you know, just even just to get on the radar because it's such a deep division. And then he spent some time on the shelf. I, I think, I think we've probably kind of slept on him a little bit. I'm excited to see him back. And then Miguel Baeza is a guy that I am very happy to have been wrong about. I had modest expectations of him when he entered the UFC. He's looked really good in his first couple of fights. Uh, you know, he won a, a just a barn bird like slugfest with Matt Brown, who is still a really tough guy to put away hmm. and then kind of flash some versatility against Takashi Sato back in November, showing that he could handle things on the ground as well. He's ready. I think for a top 15 type opponent that is Bonson Ibio. So somebody's going to take a big step forward in a division where you can't afford to take a step back. Cause just ask someone like Bonson and Ibio, how lo- how far it sets you back when you are on a streak and you lose one fight, it, it sets you back by a year or more in such a crowded division. I thought he looked good against Lee um, in that fight that, uh, you know, I, I thought he was looking decent. He was a bit slow, obviously. I mean, but that, that was for some ring rust. Uh, do you think Ponce Bibio can bounce back from this? I do. I do. I, I uh, That was, that's the kind of fight that Jing Liang Lee is capable of winning at, at any time. And it's the kind of fight that Ponce Bibio you know, likes to get into. You run that fight 10 times, it doesn't look like that way all 10 times. No. Um, so I, I still believe in Santiago Ponzinibbio, and, you know, I might be proven wrong, uh, you know, two weeks from now, but uh, but I, for me, this fight between him and Baez, uh, that's one of the reasons it has uh, so much intrigue is because there's so much we're going to learn about one or both guys. You know, um, with, with all the Kamzat Chamayev hype, I'm surprised that Ponza Bibio's name wasn't thrown in there to fight him at some point because that's a slugfest, and that's really throwing Chamayev to the water, uh, to the sharks, I should say. Um, but, yeah, that's, he's a name people forget about, like you mentioned earlier, and shouldn't what be. What in the hell is Jairzinho Rosenstrike doing? <laughs> he's standing there like a glitched NPC. He completely looks like a glitched NPC. And I can't even tell what kind of game he's an NPC for. Is this like a do like a do aerobics at home thing? Because he's kind of he's got he's hunched forward. He's, he's kind of turning a little bit from side to side. We sports. We. It's awkward, isn't it? It's it's super awkward. He looks like a serial oh. killer. Yeah, and he's a, he's about to serial kill Junior Albini here. But I'll stop that video. Oh. I'll watch it again later. That's that's a rough one. All right. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'll never not see that now. Now he's going to do it this weekend or next weekend. Um, we're recording this a week early, but uh, he's yeah. going to do it. And you're going to be like, dang, I can't. He is. He's so creepy. Like, like, like damn it, Blaine. You <laughs> brought this into my world now. Any parting thoughts we got today, Ben? Anything that you're looking forward to aside from this upcoming card? <laughs> I'm looking forward to the card after it. <laughs> UFC <laughs> Uh, 263. Uh, but no, there, there are some, some treasures on this card. Just have to do a little more digging. I'll be watching it as I watch all of them. And yeah, you know, uh, Alan Patrick versus Mason Jones. Great fight. Just, yeah. The more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, after a week off, I'll be ready to eat this right up. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're spoon feeding this crap and we're going to eat it. Oh yeah. Uh, last, last thing I want to talk about real, real quick is Aliyah Taporia coming back and he's going to mark Ryan Hall. That's all. Hey, he's not going to murk Ryan Hall. He's Ryan go- Hall's going to throw a hook kick, flop to his back, grab a heel hook, and it's going to be all over. That's what Ryan Hall does. Do you realize Tapur is Georgian, right? By way of Spain. By way of Spain. But still, he's Georgian. <laughs> he's grappled. He's Georgian. No, he, uh, Ilya Taporia obviously doesn't have quite the grappling pedigree, but like physically he has just shown to be such a dynamic and explosive guy. Uh, on top of having you know that skill set, yeah, it's a, it's a tough call for Ryan Hall, but it's a good okay. Fight. My last thought is, half the fighters in the UFC claim that nobody wants to fight him and everybody's ducking him. I believe Ryan Hall when he says it. A uh, one fighter I used to not, I believe you too on Ryan Hall because that dude is terrifying. One dude I, that used to say, and I was like, "There's no way everybody won't, anybody will fight him." Was Usman, but after Usman, I'm like, I I get it. Nobody wants to fight Usman. He's yeah. he's. 
another he's, thing. He's, he's terrifying. He, he is a literal nightmare. And with Hall, it's not just that he's so sneaky competitive, but he's a guy that is tough to look good against. Yeah. Like just and, nobody wants that fight. And the risk is a year off with ACL surgery if it gets your heel. That's, yes. that's a big risk that people don't talk about enough with uh, Ryan Hall. If he gets to your legs, it's trouble. Ask BJ Penn because uh, he lost his leg. He might as well take it home with him. <laughs> ben, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Where can everybody find you, uh, your work, your social media, all that good stuff? Well, I work for SureDog.com. You can certainly find me on the front page there. You just pull down the features drop down. My name's right there. You can read my uh, uninformed opinions to your heart's content. I also do the SureDog radio previews and recaps for every UFC card. So if you want to hear me talk more, by all means, help yourself. But uh, otherwise, I was just glad to be here today. That's it, man. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, let's go to Poria.